Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com and this is, my name's Jason Newland, this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep, please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Yeah, and if you, please go to my website, and if you like what I do, leave a review, and maybe help towards running costs, that's jasonnewland.com, and I've been working on it, working on, oh, it's just like a never-ending, never-ending thing. So since I last, well, yeah, I think it was, I think it was yesterday or the day before, I uploaded my self-development recordings. There's seventy-one um, recordings there that you can stream free and download. Um, and today, or yesterday and today, I've been uploading self-help under 10 minutes long. And there's um, 137 recordings there that I'm in the process of uploading. That's 20 hours, 21 hours and 14 minutes. So it's quite a lot. So it's... It's going to take a while to do that. I <clears throat> wonder how much time the self-development ones go on for. 44 hours and 23 minutes for that podcast. So basically, I'm going to be uploading. <laughs> I don't know why I started this, because it's just... takes forever. Um... So the self-help under 10 minutes long, the one I've done that. Um, there's the self-help for 10 to 20 minutes long, which is it's 56 files, 66, uh, 56 recordings. Then between uh, self-help 20 to 30 minutes long, there's 42 recordings. 30 to 4 minutes long um, there's 24 recordings 40 to 6 minutes long there are 24 recordings and over 1 hour long there are 9 recordings then there's the requests and there are to this 24 recordings some of those will overlap with the 71 that I've already uploaded but I'm gonna I'm just gonna categorize them to make it a little bit easier I'll just be interesting to see how so yeah it's um, according to this it's 317 recordings and just over 5 gigabytes just over five gigabytes just for that. Now I'll be interested in knowing how many, how many gigabytes the um, sleep hypnosis, uh, these let me bore you to sleep. 26.9 gigabytes. So how many recordings are on there? Uh -huh. Let me bore you to sleep. 432 files. How can that be right? Why would there be that many? Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a bit... Uh, not quite sure why I did that. It's not, it's actually... If I delete that... So I had them in files as well for some reason. So 
So I'll delete all them. Do you can tell I have too long for yes. Okay, so I'm just gonna delete that. Right. So the amount I've actually got in there in this file is 223 recordings and that comes to 14 gigabytes so there's another 80 recordings to go in there yeah so that's fine um, what's it doing cancelling let's just get out of that anyway that was boring that really was boring so just you know again say thank you to those of you that are that have been listening to my recordings yeah again yesterday had another good day stats wise um, I had four According to this, although I think it's it normally goes up once they've actually correlated it, but according to this, yesterday, Tuesday the 14th of January 2020, I had 3,917 downloads. The day before, on Monday the 13th of January 2020, 4,365 downloads and Sunday I had 2,645 downloads so it's it go but then yeah what was that the 12th but the day before that I had 2,926 the day before that 3,571 the day before that 3,600 3,629 so you know it's, it variates variates but it's definitely an upward spiral so that's quite good I, I like it when it's around the 4,000 mark it makes me feel all warm and tingly inside so just to let you know because you know I'm, I'm big on the old uh, stats I'm now we got just nine and a half thousand off of hitting the hundred thousand mark for this podcast. So we're currently at ninety thousand four hundred and eighty eight downloads. So let's keep going, pals. Come on, we can do it. We can do it. We can get it done. We can really can so yeah that's groovy listeners what does that say I'm confused by the listeners because it's saying there's less listeners than there are downloads I'm just a little bit confused by that I don't understand it because these recordings last an hour long people aren't going to be listening to them more than once or maybe they are I don't know Um, anyway that's that so what have I got to say before I actually start it's been very windy today I love the wind I don't know what it is I I suppose it's because, because I enjoy producing my own wind so I appreciate nature's wind. It's it's just fantastic. I just I like nature. Don't necessarily like being out in it, but you know, it's a bit like I quite like uh, prison documentaries. I don't want to be in prison, but I, you know, I, it's I like. I kind of think of my window as being a big television but at the moment the curtains are drawn but I've got the sound I've got the sound of the wind and 
it's an old building that I live in. It's very like post war, post Second World War. And you could say, well, every building's post Second World War, isn't it? Even one that was built yesterday. Yeah, 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 fair enough. But this is, this was built probably in the 50s. So it's, yeah, so probably it's older than me. And that's saying something. And you know what? I know it's weird, but it's not that weird because someone said it on Facebook the other day. uh, And I completely agree. They said she wished she could take, pack up her flat, her home, and move it to a different place. Somewhere that she wants to live. Somewhere, you know, but she wants to keep her home. And I feel the same. I'd like to take this flat and Andre and everything in the flat. There's not a lot in here, but it's my stuff. And I'd like to move it to Torquay. I've got a little, I've got a little thing about Torquay or Wales. Now, I don't want to be too far away from the hospital just for practical reasons as I get a bit older and stuff I want to I don't want to be I don't want to be right in the sticks in the middle of nowhere like I am now I'm so far away from anything it's ridiculous but you know it's I think if someone was living in the city then moving somewhere like where I live would be a really nice uh change of pace because very you know, it's all countryside around here mind you the whole of this country is countryside even the cities are surrounded by countryside some of the cities have got countryside in the cities we're just we've got we are just a one big countryside hence the word country with and we've just built stuff, knocked trees down and built stuff, and grown food. And then, well, we got fed up and we decided we don't need to grow food anymore, even though the population's uh, gone up hugely, and we can't, you know, can't actually uh, self-sustain. We're not able to look after ourselves for food. We have to buy it from other countries, so we have to rely on other people. But you know we build build on that land anyway, so that we've got more houses and stuff. Oh, that's a very social. I, there's a new thing. I don't know if you've know, known about this. It's. I read it. I read it to you. <laughs> it's something that I've been hearing, and because I listen to talk radio quite a bit, it's uh, they've started talking about this. And it's a word called woke. Right. So, woke. This is the definition. This is the... What does the woke... What does woke mean? Woke means being conscious of racial discrimination in society and other forms of oppression and injustice. In mainstream use, woke can also more generally describe someone or something as being with it. So if someone says if someone says to you, I'm woke, it means that they, they kind of big up in themselves. They kind of, you know, I'm really with it. I'm really aware of social issues and stuff. And... Uh, I've noticed that people seem to be using it more. I've noticed, and there was even a Guardian. And uh, there's actually, for so, the Guardian, I was, I was really was reading this in the Guardian. And um, this, literally just as I looked at it, there's this, uh, the more, this is the headline, The more the word woke is used as a slur and a joke, the more we need it. Um, 
and it's, by the time we got our heads around what woke was it felt like it was going to end up as the political correctness gone bad it was meant to counter but I've changed my mind says Chitra and she says woke how do you react to this four letter word with an eye roll no, actually it's a question mark with an eye roll cynicism or the exhaustion that comes with checking your privilege ceasingly when everything is a potential culture war and the world teeters further to the right ah. as someone who's been writing a column that claims to be wide awoke let me tell you this a year ago I loathed the word Woke was like a badge that people seemed suspiciously keen to pin to themselves. It said, look at me and the work I've done on myself. By the time we got our heads around, or heads around, what woke was, in essence, a pledge to stay vigilant to oppression that rose alongside the Black Lives Matter movement it felt as if it had already been co-opted. Pepsi ads, woke guides to Christmas, on and on. By the time we hit peak woke, sorry, by the time we hit peak woke, it felt like it was going to end up as the political correctness gone mad it was supposed to counter. Which is what she said at the beginning. This isn't an essay. You don't have to sort of that's what you do with an essay, isn't it? You give a little little synopsis at the beginning, what I'm going to talk about. And Over the past year, I've changed my mind. I find myself defending the word. The more woke is used as a slur, joke or shorthand to mock the hypersensitivity of the left, the more we need it. We need it to keep debating subjects in shutdown. We needed to remind ourselves that debates shut down in the first place because they don't want or they don't start on an equal footing. One person's intellectual exploration is another, another's marginalised life. We needed to understand the subtle difference between being an ally or ally and speaking on behalf of others. We need it to shut up and try listening. So, basically, I kind of, I had not even heard of it until recently. But then, I'm 49, I'm not really supposed to know about, well, I don't know, am I, I mean, I go on Facebook, I don't spend huge amount of times on there. But most of the people on my Facebook pages are adults. As it, not adults, all of them are adults, but they're all, um, you know, I would say pretty much all of them, or most of the people on my Facebook are above 30. Some are, some are in their 20s, uh, but most are 30, some have got well, lots in their 40s, lots in their 50s, 60s, 70s, whatever. So I've not I've not seen any posts using this term. But this lady, Chitra Ramas Ramaswamy, uh, she actually her page is called Wider Woke. So it's it's on the Guardian, and it's in the Life and Style section. So ch check it out. It's Chitra Ramaswamy. So it's C H I T R A. R A M A S W A M Y, and you can check her out on um, what's the little bird, the little blue bird thing, Twitter at Chitgrl. So it's C H I T G R R L. So I thought I'd just let you know that, just in case, because as I'm reading a little bit out of her thing. Would uh, 
give you a little bit of information about her so you can check her out and everything and see I think what it is is there's how I came around how I came about reading about this is there was an article and I'll, I'll read a little bit of this actually uh, in fact I can actually give you I remember because I wrote I read it yesterday Doctor Who Doctor Who to woke okay I didn't understand what what I was reading but then I found it too woke nope Doctor Who is more offensive than ever that's the headline and again it's the Guardian and basically it's talking about putting people in a role that it's gone I have to be careful how I say this but For example, put in a okay. So put in a Chinese lady in the role of Hitler in a movie or television show. It's that kind of situation where. Um, this put why why make why make why why can't we give that actress or that actor rather that actor a role? They deserve it as if they are good at the role and they can um, look good in a moustache or whatever. And they <laughs> it, it's that and then now they're that's kind of woke but too woke apparently, where they say it's just getting ridiculous where. It's too politically correct and it's starting to look silly where it doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, oh, I've just received some uh, a PayPal gift from Mary. Thank you. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Um, so yeah, it's um, it says here since returning with a female doctor, which has annoyed people for some reason. Some people, I mean, I don't see. I think it's about what we know, isn't it? That's all it is. If we'd grown up, if if the fans of Doctor Who had grown up, and the Doctor had always been a woman, a woman, or women, because there've been so many. And suddenly they put a man in as the doctor. There'd be just as much uprising, just as much criticism, guaranteed. It's just people get used to things, don't they? And but then he's saying they're making a big deal because the Doctor Who returned last week with another first, Sasha Dewan's Carson as a first person of colour to play the Doctor's arch nemesis the Master well why why would it matter that's what I don't understand why would it matter um, it's a fictional character the Doctor Who is a fictional character it's not a real person you know Do you, remember, do you remember Mini Me? You know, Mini Me, unfortunately passed away, but Mini Me from the, you know, the films. Brilliant. He was on um, the, the English Big Brother and he was so funny. Ah, oh, just anyone that didn't, anyone that didn't fall in love with him, I can't understand why. He was just so, he was just lovely. And he's one of those few people that I really would have liked to have met. He's just, he just, he was just, I want to say adorable because he was little. It wasn't that, it was just funny. And he was adorable because he was little, but it wasn't just that. It was, he was, it was funny. He was just really funny. Anyway, um, 
he check that out on YouTube if you ever if you're not from England go onto YouTube and just put in mini me on English Big Brother and it'll show you some clips of him there's one bit where he's on his trolley you know the motorized um, not wheelbarrow um, not go-kart the thing that he's he, he sit on and he drive around on it and he was he was using it to try and ram down one of the doors to the diary room literally he went from about 100 yards and bashed right into it absolutely brilliant it was just it was so funny and um, so yeah I, but if you if you got him and has anyone ever seen Stephen Merchant he co-wrote The Office with Ricky Gervais he's been in quite a few films uh, Hello Ladies was a HBO show that he was in um, he's had his own stand up specials as well called Hello Ladies he's got glasses and big smile and he's about 7 foot tall now if we I think that would be an example of too woke <laughs> if um, we you casted him as the role as mini of mini me in mini me's life story because even though he he may be the greatest actor in the world and you could say well why shouldn't he play him is reality is it just wouldn't make sense just like Stephen Merchant or just like mini me playing playing Hitler or playing Churchill although they did kind of both look like babies but if you know do you see what I mean it's mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah but if it's a fictional character what does it matter if it's a real life person that they're trying to um, portray in a film then they try and get the person to look like the person don't they uh, I tell you, a good film you want to watch, or you don't, you might not want to watch it. But you, it's worth it. It's uh, Stan and Ollie, it's, um, Laurel and Hardy. It's their life story, but it's more about their comeback. So it's start. It's really good. It's a really good film. It's got Steve Coogan and. Right, O'Reilly, oh, I forget his name, um, but he's a big star in America. Uh, he was in, he was in Brothers or Brother in Law, the comedy with, I don't know, these different people, but they've got them dressed up and with the the makeup, prosthetics, or whatever it is, and they look so much like Laurel and Hardy. It's ridiculous. And Steve Coogan is a master impressionist. He's absolutely an amazing um, impressionist. He's, I know, I mean, I'm sure people in other countries know who he is, but he's a massive star in, in this country because of mainly because of Alan Partridge more than anything else even though he's been in loads of movies um, Welcome to the Museum or you know, those those films um, not Driving Miss Daisy but what's the other one where because there's two famous films in there Driving Miss Daisy where it's kind of based on a relationship between a chauffeur and the person being chauffeured around but in the other one, Steve Coogan's a chauffeur, and there's another lady that's being chauffeured around. And they both got nominated for Oscars. But I think Driving Miss Daisy did win an Oscar, didn't it? If not more than one. Um, of course, I've got the internet here, I could check it out, but I can't be bothered. 
It involves stretching my hands out. So, yeah, too woke. But I can't use that expression, really, with anyone that I know because I don't know anyone that would use that expression. I try and kind of match the people I'm around, in a sense, because... It's not that I've got a, a, a larger vocabulary. I couldn't think what the words was this. A bit of a lot of vocabulary. It's just, you know, if I start using... I could use words, specialist terms to do with counselling or to do with therapy or to do with hypnosis or uh, technical terms with websites and stuff like that with friends and they won't know what I'm talking about because they're not into that stuff but at the same time they can talk about you know use technical words for their stuff so whatever they do I don't know I'm sure they do something I don't really listen to them but <laughs> they don't do what I do so therefore I'm not interested so that's what two woke is that's what woke is and two woke now I've not watched Doctor Who really for years I used to watch it when I was a kid and um, and I've I have noticed that the old uh the term too woke could be applied with quite a few things recently that I've seen on telly where um, due to the cultural situation at that period in that country's history that particular person would not be doing that particular job that's uh, been very vague with that one but it's like if this is really going to be trying to be a historically correct film or TV show then it just seems that we should keep it historically correct but then maybe not I don't know I don't really care enough about it if I'm honest Oh look. Lake Fermi me me me. Me 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 me. Uh, I'm just trying to look for some nice news, but <laughs> I'm clearly looking in the wrong place. Oh, Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. Oh, Vince Vaughn. How dare. You know what? I dare, well, not dare, but any person in any country who's at a sporting event and the president or prime minister or leader, czar, whatever of that country goes to shake their hand or goes to shake your hand, you're probably going to put your hand out to shake. In some countries, if you didn't do that, you possibly might not be seen again. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not always a good idea to uh, be rude to the leader of the country. But from another side, Vince Vaughan was there. It could have been anyone to put their hand out. And our natural reaction is to put a hand out to shake their hand. It's an inbuilt thing that we learn from a very, very early age. It's automatic. Even if it's someone you don't know. So I'll put a hand out. Oh, nice. You know, and you just put your hand out automatically. Now, if it's a really important person and you've got cameras on you and you're a famous person, chances are, you know, it was kind of in a no win situation, wasn't it? If he just, if he blanked the president, he would have had loads of people giving him grief. 
but by being nice he's had loads of people giving him grief so I do wonder though is, it, is that really what the newspapers are focusing on in America I'm, I'm sure they're not but that was, it was all over the internet yesterday and I'm thinking because I don't know what the newspapers in the US of A are focusing on because I'm not there and so I, you know, we get different news here there's, there's, I know there's one ongoing story obviously that's going to be there but um, yeah I wonder if uh, Vince Vaughan is popular over there at the moment and then you've got back. Stephen King faces backlash over comments on Oscar's diversity uh. Uh. that's it that was all I had on that so that's woke that's what woke means apparently wow Doctor Who today or yesterday they've actually got um, this is the Daily Star they're saying the headline is Doctor Woke <laughs> oh wow let me have a look what that says or am I able to get into it some of these things Doctor Woke yeah the star fan claims Time Lord is getting too preachy I accept okay Doctor Who fans are worried the sci-fi series is turning into an eco-warrior style sermon in Sunday's episode about climate change the Doctor Judy Whittaker and her pals landed on a dead planet called Orphan 55 however in a twist they discovered it was Earth in the future and the Time Lord warns her companions unless people face facts and change catastrophe is coming now fans of slam show boss Chris Chibnall for turning the program into a preacher's playground one fan tweeted I used to quite like Doctor Who when it was about science fiction I wonder what that social issue the doc will be tackling next did that at the side of my mouth I was quite pleased with that casting another posted OMG the doc's getting political Chibnall came under fire in 2018 during his first season as show boss why is that not going across oh it does oh, that's good wow many did not like the fact that for the first time the doctor was being played by a woman and they felt that the casting was too PC by hiring a black actor an Asian actress and a middle aged white man Tosin Kill Madeep Gill and Bradley Walsh by the way that middle aged white man is a very 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 famous TV personality He's, uh, I don't know the two actors, but he's he's got a TV show, again, for those that aren't in this country, he's got a TV show called The Chase, and it's on you know, five nights a week, sometimes at weekends as well with celebrities, and it's, it's, a, it's one of the biggest shows on telly, so he's not just some random, the way they're putting him. Chibnall said, in the week after Rosa aired, we were deluged with calls, emails, letters from parents and kids. We've got videos of kids shouting at the TV, going, go Rosa. The BBC declined to comment. There was about a story called Rosa about... Ah, oh. blimey. I've got no idea. Mind you, this is quite a good little thing. Press reader. Pressreader.com. So let me have a look, see what this is, because it's almost it lets you go onto it, but you can move the page. 
the same way as you would with a tablet but on a laptop obviously it can't touch the screen but I can you can move it along with the with the um, what's it categories categories animals and pets art oh no that's not working oh again you, you move it up now computers and technology design kids and tweens for men for women gaming health and fitness LGBTQMNRSTUV uh, photography religious religion and spirituality ah, let's have a look what it says in health and fitness that'd be an interesting one to me it's health and fitness wow 3A life and sport I wonder if it allows me to go into every page probably not I doubt it Oh, alternative medicine. Let's click on that one. Alternative medicine. This is Wednesday, the 1st of February, 2017. Ah, oh, to unlock it. Yeah, Facebook. I log in with Facebook. No. What does it say? Library or group? Library. No, it's American. It's given a list of American libraries. I'll cancel that. Oh, it's allowing me to subscribe. Go premium, choose from thousands of titles. Start your seven day free trial. Then £27.49 a month. Eee. That's interesting. So it's uh, there's pointless going to that then, so I might as well get out of that. Yeah. Well, what I was actually, I haven't really started the recording yet. What I wanted to talk about woke, swear down. What I wanted to talk about was um, television shows from the 70s or well, from my childhood, but I thought I'd start in the 70s. So I think I'm going to start with, what shall I start? I've got subcategories. I'm on wikipedia.org. British, so there's a limit. This is 1970s British animated television series. You're right, Andre. No, he's going for a little wonder. 1970s British Anthology Television Series. 1970s British tele Children's Television Series. Then you've got British Comedy Television Series. British Crime Television Series. Documentary Drama. Game Shows. Legal Television Series. I wouldn't be watching that when I was in the 70s. British LGBT related television series in the 70s okay well are you being served is in that and it had a camp man But it had nothing to do. What well, he didn't. I mean, he was he was gay, but he he wasn't allowed to be gay in the TV show because it was illegal back then in the seventies. I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look. When did being gay become legal in the UK? Let's have a look. 
timeline. When did being go? Okay, here we go. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. Uh, so. Oh, no, I'm wrong. I'm very wrong. Oh, no, wait a minute. Um, why are they not? If some of these articles, they don't give the exact stuff. Right. There's the Sexual Offence Act came into play in 1967. There were still stipulations played on gay men's freedoms. Okay, so you had to be over 21 to be gay in the UK, but that was 1967. So it wasn't, it was, it was legal, but it was just not until 1967. And then It was still five, that was still five years older than the age of consent for straight couples, which was 16 in England. It only reached as far as England, Wales, or Scotland, not following suit until 1981 and Northern Ireland in 1962. So in 2000, the age of um, consent and legalised was the same. And um, yeah, okay. So yeah, in two thousand, the um, all the the men in Parliament and the House of Lords, they all got together and they voted on lowering the age from twenty one. To 16 oh to I think it was 18 I think and then to, but anybody they got to lower it to 16 I thought it was more recent than that and this is a really badly written article it just doesn't give the So 1967 was when it was legal. But anyway, so it was 2000 apparently. I thought it was a bit later. But 2000, the, um, the men, the old men in Parliament and House of Lords got together to vote on reducing the uh, legal age from 21 or from whatever age it was to 16 and apparently it was the quickest vote that they've ever put through it was <laughs> it was put through very quickly and there was a, very, a lot of very happy happy parliamentarians that day yeah, so yeah they seemed really happy I guess that they'd uh, they were happy that they'd helped a lot of people to live their lives how they wanted to so I guess that's why they were so cheerful and yeah, okay wow it does make me wonder before I know Nineteen sixty-six, nineteen sixty-seven. Hmm. In two thousand and four, another milestone is reached with the Civil Partnership Act two thousand and four, which allowed same-sex couples to legally enter into binding partnerships similar to marriage. The subsequent marriage was 2013. 
and then um, yeah so that was 2013 and then in Scotland it was 2014 and 2000, uh, Northern Ireland does not allow um, does not have marriage equality in law uh, yeah. I find that quite interesting I was going to talk um, Agony what I don't say, a British sitcom aired on ITV from 1979 to 1981 made by London Weekend Television it stars Maureen Lipman as Jane Lucas who has a successful career as an agony aunt but whose own personal life is a shambles it was created by Lynn Richmond and real life agony aunt Anne Rayburn both of whom wrote all of the first series the second and third series were written by Stan Hay and Andrew Nichols Agony was the first British sitcom to portray a gay couple as non-camp witty, intelligent and happy people Yeah. So, oh man, I will tell you, is I said you should see, but you you shouldn't really. But there's some really, really dodgy stuff in the seventies, sitcoms and stuff. Um, let me have a look. Let me read some of them for you. Can you hear him? He's just making as much noise as he can. He's like a petulant child. I don't know what he wants though. He's got food. He's got everything he needs. Perhaps not my attention right now. So... Some of these I've never heard of. Albert and Victoria, never heard of that. The Alan Stewart tapes, never heard of that. Anne of Green Gables, sounds familiar but I don't remember it. As Good Cooks Go, and these are comedy shows, British comedy television series. B, okay, Bachelor Father, nope. Beryl's Lot, nope. Big Boy Now, I have no idea what that was about. Sounds like it should. Uh. Black and Blue, uh, Bless Me Father, Bless This House, I think that was Sid James from the Carry On films. Uh, I, used to, I, used to, I have seen that. Now Andre's licking my leg. What are you doing, mate? Are you alright? Just had to grab the boy. He was licking my leg, so he clearly wants my attention, don't you? Eh? Are you alright, baby? Oh, that's my little boy. Just have a little rest. So, bless this house, so I know that one. Bloomers, nope. Bowler, nope. The Cannon and Ball Show, yeah. That was one of my favourite shows when I was a kid. Didn't think that was the 70s, I thought that was the 80s. Uh, it probably crossed over between the 70s, late 70s and early 80s. Carry On Laughing. Yeah, I used to watch that in the 80s though, so. And the 90s, they've like, re shown that. And it's basically f clips from the films. Casanova 73, don't know that. Chalk and Cheese, don't know that one. Charlie's Grants, nope. A Class by Himself, nope. The Comedians, not at the time, it was 1971, so I was one years old. 
I've always prided myself on having quite a good sense of humour. But at one years old, I probably wasn't quite... Uh, my brain hadn't developed enough. What are you doing, baby? What are you doing? I can't stop kissing you because you're so cute. Yeah, you're my mini-me. Yes, you are. What do you say? You think that they, a lion should play you in your life story of Andre? A lion? Why? What, because it'd be woke? Because you're woke and you want, it, you want a lion to portray, portray, portray you? Oh, okay. But you think that might be a bit too woke? <laughs> you look at me. <laughs> Okay, you go off and do your thing. Uh, the Comedy Playhouse, nope. Comedy Premier, nope. The Cuckoo Waltz, nope. Culture Virtues, Vultures, nope. Doctor at Large. I don't remember seeing it at the time, but I've seen it. Actually, I don't know. I did used to watch it, but I don't know if it was the 70s or 80s. Doctor at Sea, no, don't remember that. Doctor in Charge, no. Doctor on the Go, don't, don't forget to write, no. End of Part One, nope. Face the Music, nope. The Fall and Rise of Reginald Perrin, I do remember that, but I didn't watch it until the 80s. The Penn Street Gang, nope. Follow That Dog. Sounds familiar, but I don't, unless I'm thinking, catch that pigeon, maybe I'm thinking of that. For the Love of Arda, nope. The Fosters, sounds familiar to me, but I don't remember it. Uh, from a Bird's Eye View, nope. Going Straight, that was, I think, Fletcher. Yeah, it was basically... Uh, it was Ronnie Barker who was in Porridge and it was a TV show after that and then so I did watch that but I think probably in the 80s The Goodies TV show yeah I used to watch them Goody 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 Gum Gum loved that show it's very funny Happy Ever After, British TV series, nope. Or, I don't know, it sounds familiar. Hark at Barker, nope. Hello Cheeky, don't remember that. How is your father? Quite innuendo y kind of uh, names, aren't they? The Howard Confessions, nope. I didn't know you cared, nope. In Love and Memory, yeah, I remember that, I think. In the Looking Glass, no. The Innes Book of Records. The Innes Book of Records? Not the Guinness Book of Records. If it's a comedy, I don't know. It Ain't Half Hot Mum. Now that's a hugely famous sitcom from that era, which is, I don't think, well they couldn't play it on television now due to the content it's a very uh, very unwoke content it will be alright on the night well that's been going for about 50 years they started that I think before television even started which don't make sense it's awfully bad for your eyes darling so I don't know what that's about joke is wild I, rec I remember the title, but I don't know the TV show. Keep it in the family. Uh, not sure. The Kenny Everett video show. Again, if you don't know who Kenny Everett is, oh, you got to check him out, man. He was hilarious. The Last of the Baskets. Nope. I'm going back to Kenny Everett. 
he used to, he used to have these characters. He was a radio DJ, and it's very funny. But then he got his own TV show, and it, uh, yeah, and just brilliant. And the weird thing is, I never heard him on the radio when I was a kid that I remember. But I used to, when I was, yeah, I suppose late seventies. I used to do impressions of him. So I remember being on the beach in Wales, probably about nine years old, with my brothers and going, Ooh, done with the best possible taste. Sid's so not here. Mm, just doing all the sort of the characters. And and then in the nineties, the early nineties, I used to work in this place and they had the radio on all the time and they used to play Capital Gold and he was the DJ on there very funny he'd have all these jingles really really good jingles that he made himself he's a very he's a great DJ so there's the last of the baskets a little bit of wisdom nope Lollipop loves Mr Mole nope The Losers and The Lovers that's two different shows nope don't know either of them Ma, the Marty Fieldman Comedy Machine, nope. The Melting Pot, nope. The Misfit, nope. Mixed Blessings, no. Moody and Peg, no. The More We Are Together, no. That was 1971, so a little bit before my time, really. I was one. The Muppet Show, of course. Is there anyone in the world? Who owns a television that hasn't watched The Muppet Show at some point? Um, I love The Muppet Show. It was pretty much the biggest TV show on. It was the 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 highlight of Saturday evening, I think, or was it Sunday evening? I can't remember. My music, don't know that one. My old man, don't know that one. My wife next door. That sounds familiar. Not on your Nelly. And that's going to be Frankie Howard, isn't it? No, it's not. Not at all. It's a, it's a British sitcom that ran from 1974 until 1975. It starred veteran actress Hilda Baker as Nellie Pickersgill a Bolton woman who moves to London to help run her ailing father's Chelsea pub 17 episodes of the series were produced by London Weekend Television now look here no don't remember that one that was between 1971 and 1973 Odd Man Out Uh, no, but that starred uh, John Inman, who was in. Um, Are you free? I'm free. That TV show, and then this. Oh no, it's Selwyn Froggett. Wow. Poor. Yeah, it's uh, oh no, it's Selwyn Froggett. I remember that TV show, it ran on ran on the ITV from 1974 to 1978, but they were still showing it, starred Bill Maynard. But it was still showing it repeats in the eighties. I think, yeah. On the house is a British yeah, including uh, No, don't remember that one. Can't believe how many of them I don't remember. I reckon if I got to the eighties, I bet you I remember 
oh here's one this is just like a blast from the past rent a ghost that has a, a fond a fondness in my memory forever that one rent a ghost it was it used to be on Sunday afternoons and we used to watch it and what years was it on wow it was on for a lot so I used to watch it I started watching it in 76 77 something like that yeah 1977 and it started in 76 until 84 and it used to be on yeah, as I said it probably won't say what day it was on but it used to be Sundays uh, in, in those days anyway rings of their fingers on their fingers nope ripping yarns yeah didn't watch it I don't think when it first came out but it had two of the Monty Python team in Michael Palin and Terry Jones very funny funny show I used to watch that in the 90s or late 80s Romany Jones no Rosie no Rutland Weekend Television that's Eric Idle oh. wow I mean, some of these shows might have been really big not really popular but because it's such a long time ago I kind of forgotten Ryan and Ronnie no nope, don't know that Seven of One nope a sharp intake of breath I think I have seen that but not um Yeah, not when it um, was on first. I don't. Oh, I might have done, but it's David Jason who played Dollboy in Only Fools and Horses. But that was in the seventies until eighty one. Shelley, yeah, I used to love Shelley. Didn't realise it started in the seventies, but I used to watch it. I watched it probably late 80s to be fair so I didn't watch the early ones it was on from 79 to 84 then it came back again from 88 to 92 I watched it between 88 and 92 and it had Hill Bennett it's very uh, it was a really good show I really liked it and did, 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 shine a light nope shut that door British comedy hosted by Larry Grayson from 1972 to 1977. No, I don't remember that. I remember him though. That was his famous catchphrase. Shut that door. Um, he used to do the generation game. It's very, very funny. Uh, six dates with Barker. Alright, it's Ronnie Barker. A six a series of six one off half hour situation comedies showcasing the talents of Ronnie Barker. All were broadcast by uh, in nineteen seventy one. Yeah. I wonder why he was already famous. I put it like he was like just starting out or something. He was already a huge star. Some mothers do have them. One of my favourite shows ever. Ran from 1973 to 1978. Um, brilliant show. Some Son of the Bride. Nope, Sykes. No, but that was Eric Sykes. I don't remember seeing that, but I might have done. Sykes and the Big Big Band. Again, that's Eric Sykes. 
and a big, 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 big show. Okay. Tell Tarby. That's Jimmy Tarbuck. So I don't remember that. Terry and June. Oh, love Terry and June. 1979 to 1987. Absolutely loved that show. That was um, Terry Scott and June Whitfield. Really brilliant. And Terry Scott's voice. He's got the best voice. He's just... Oh. He was Penfold in um, Danger Mouse, the TV show in the, in the 80s. Not the, the new one. Thickest Thieves. Nope. To the Manor Born, yeah, I remember that. Uh, Penelope Keith and Peter Bowles. The Top Secret Life of Edgar Briggs, nope. Hear that wind. The Train Now Standing, nope. Two in Clover, nope. Two Up, Two Down. British sitcom with Paul Nicholas and Sue Pollard. Two up, two down. It aired for one series in 1979. Yeah, I do remember that, but I don't. I do, but I don't, if that makes sense. Yeah. Two's Company, no, I don't remember that. Up Sunday, nope. The Vital Spark, nope. Whatever Happened to the Likely Lads, yeah. I remember that. Um, the Wheel Tappers and Shunter's Social Club. See, whatever happened to the Likely Lads? Seven, between 73 and 74. And it was the the sequel to the Black and White, The Likely Lads, which was on in the 60s. And to be fair... I might have seen it, but let's face it, I'd have been three or four years old. In fact, I'd have been three. So I probably didn't, wouldn't have seen it first time around or remember it. But I have seen both shows, you know, The Like Lads and Remember the Like Lads, or whatever happened to The Like Lads. It's quite gritty, very. Um, I mean, the black and white series in the 60s was kind of post-war everything's post-war isn't it yeah I know but like directly afterwards and it's very a lot of social commentated really on in the show and then whatever happened to the Lighty Lads brings them back together after quite a bit of time apart and kind of getting reacquainted and stuff it's it's a good show very good show they had a lot of um Really good chemistry, them two. It was. Um, well, it doesn't say who it is. I know who it is, but I can't remember the names. The Will Tappers and Shunters Social Club? Nope. Who Do You Do? Nope. Whoops, Baghdad? Nope. Whoops, Baghdad? No, I've never heard of that. Woodhouse Playhouse, no. no that's Wodehouse Playhouse. The Worker, no. Yanks Go Home. It's a British sitcom about a US Army Air Force man stationed in Lancashire, England, in the Second World War. It was produced and directed by Eric Preithurch for Granada Television between 76 and 77 so no I don't know what that never heard of that yes honestly no don't know that you're only young twice no yes yes my dear nope don't know that one either wow I thought there'd be more. Uh, admittedly, these are all British-made sitcoms, so it's missed out a lot of the good stuff from America. Uh, like Soap, that's one um, 
going back to the 70s that was in the 70s wasn't it I think soap I'm sure it was or early 80s 70s what other ones from the 70s sitcoms I don't know I'm trying to think I can name loads from the 80s oh, maybe I'll do that another time because you know when I think about the 80s you know they've got Cheers you've got the Golden Girls, Roseanne, um, <laughs> just said I could name loads, there was loads, I just can't remember all of them, off the top of my head, that's why we got the internet in it, so I suppose I should just say thank you very much listening thanks thank you very much what are we doing here 692 so so far my total download 6, 692,827 can't wait for it to reach the million and then the two million then the ten million oh it makes my makes my toenails grow an extra inch thinking about it so I'm going to go thank you for listening remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy Lots of love. Bye from me and from the wind outside.